if you guys can remember when doing um, cosecant graphs, uh, it's easiest to make sure that we just graph it's reciprocal, and then what we'll do is that's going to help us find the cosecant. So if you can remember, cosecant is going to be the reciprocal of sine, right? So pretty much what I can do is just write y equals sine of x divided by 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to graph the sine graph, and then what I'll do is I'll use that graph to help me determine what the cosecant graph is going to look like. So when we're graphing sine and cosine graphs, remember there's a couple things we did. First thing we always figured out what the amplitude was. Amplitude was the absolute value of A, which here we have a 1 in front of the sign, so it's going to be absolute value of 1, which is 1. That means my graph is going to go up 1 and down 1 from the x-axis, right? That's the height that the graph is going to travel. Next thing we're going to look at is the period. <coughs> Remember, the period for a sine and cosine graph was 2 pi over b. Well, here, remember your b was your number that was in front of your x. Well, here you can say there's a 1 in front of the x, and that 1 is being divided by the 2. So therefore, when you have a 1 divided by the 2, uh, my b is now going to be 1 half. So you could say 2 pi over 1 half. And remember when we have to, to get rid of the fraction on the bottom, we multiply by the reciprocal. So then we'll end it up, we get 4 pi as our period. Then the next thing we want to do is make sure, remember a sine and cosine graph, we can break it up into four important points. So what we do is, or four important intervals. So we take our period and we always divide by four. And that just helps us find out our important points for a graph. So four pi divided by four ends up giving us pi. So if I was going to go and start graphing this, um, let's say one period. So that means the time it takes our graph to complete one cycle is going to be at 4 pi. Then there's four important points. So I'm going to evenly break this up into four points. And I set each, the distance between each point is pi. So the first one from here to here, this is 0. Here is pi. So then this one, pi plus pi, would be 2 pi. Plus pi would give you 3 pi. All right? The amplitude is up one, down one. So I'll just say there's one, there's negative one. All right, and that's about it. So now I need to remember what does the sine graph look like, right? Well, remember the sine graph, without any vertical or horizontal translation, crosses at zero comma zero. Um, it crosses halfway through its period, and it's going to end at a period. So here it's going to be our first maximum. And then here will be our first minimum. All right. Now remember, when doing this, we only just want to draw this graph very faintly because we're not going to be using the sine graph is not actually going to be a part of our graph. All right. And then if I want to continue, right, we always want to do like two periods. Well, we can go in the negative direction. This will be negative pi, negative two pi. And here we can do five pi, six pi. Okay, so is everybody following me so far with what I've done? Yes. All right, so now what we're going to do is now we need to take a look at this and we need to say, all right, well, what is the cosecant graph going to look like? Well, because this is, this is graphing the sine, and I only did this to help us prepare for what our cosecant graph is going to look like. So now what I need to do is I need to determine what are our points in our cosecant. Well, if you guys remember, cosecant for any value x is equal to 1 over the sine of x. All right? And if I look at what it, for this graph, the sine of 2 pi in this graph is what? What is the y value? When I evaluate for the sine of 2 pi, it's going to be 0, right? So therefore, if I was to write in cosecant of 2 pi is equal to 1 over sine of 2 pi. Well, the sine of 2 pi is going to give me 0. So really, the cosine of cosecant, I'm sorry, of 2 pi is going to give me 1 over 0, which we cannot have, right? You cannot take 1 divided by 0. So if you guys can get it ingrained that, remember, every single, if you take your sine and cosine graph, every single time you have an intercept, what that does is that has now just created a vertical asymptote. 
It was just like when we talked about rational functions. Remember the asymptote for a rational function was when you made your denominator equal to zero. So now what we've done is we've created our asymptotes. Okay? And that means our graph is never going to cross these vertical asymptotes. What it's going to do is it's going to approach these, but it's never going to cross them. Then the last stage is we see we have our maximum and our minimum points, which are at a y value of 1. What we're simply just going to do is make little parabola curves going in the opposite direction of each one of these maximum and minimums. Approaching our asymptotes, but never crossing them. All right, and then once we've had that now created, we can simply just erase our sine graph as we really just use it as an aid to figure out our cosecant. Okay? Yay! 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 Good work, huh?